Recently, there's been talk within the community about how we should approach criticizing a player. And this has been largely spawned by a tweet from uh, Mark Z making a joke about 100 Thieves support player Poom uh, just having a terrible scoreline of 323 and 6, I think, uh, out of three games in a best of five series against Evil Geniuses where they lost 0 and 3. Now, even better, <laughs> I think, is uh, that you have the C9 uh, social media manager making a gif about uh, Rioma, the mid laner for 100 Thieves, missing both his Q <laughs> and his uh, sleep spell on Zoe against just minions, just minions without any pressure at all from you know any other enemy champion he just completely misses both spells and it just looks fucking hilarious right and so the question of you know this entire social media um i guess criticism or even hatred as some would consider it is that should professionals first of all be allowed to criticize pro players and even make jokes at their expense and secondly is it okay for the community to do the same thing so we'll first start off with professionals such as you know pundits or analysts or even official broadcast members uh being very critical of a specific said player's uh, play now as a player being criticized by the official broadcast yeah, it's got to be tough as a player, right? Because you have to consider this is being viewed by thousands upon thousands, hundred thousands actually upon hundred thousands of people. And so when a caster or an analyst talks shit about you, then it's kind of taken more in a personal sense, but only because of the large swath of the audience itself. Now, if it were just some shitter on Reddit that, you know, has said this to an outvoted thread of, of five, then who gives a fuck, right? Because at the end of the day, no one else saw that entire comment to begin with. So then it becomes this idea of, well, if someone has a large influence or a large amount of uh, listeners on whatever specific platform, whether that be Reddit or Twitter or Instagram or whatnot, then that of influences the actual severity into which uh, the comments have been made uh, just as a generality, right? And so as such, players may feel as though their job is on the line, right? It, it, it's like if you get talk shit in front of, you know, hundreds of thousands of fans on the official broadcast, in fact, then that's going to reflect on both all of the the teams that are actually watching all of the general managers all of the coaches all of the other players that are actually watching the live match with all the uh, commentary then that's certainly going to negatively affect you and as such i think it should be a little bit more toned down when it comes to the broadcast in terms of uh, harsh criticism criticism that is not backed by specific analysis but also you know first of all pro players just in and of themselves and believing that maybe it is harsh criticism of what they're receiving they may not even believe what the analysts are saying is true and so therefore it kind of taints the actual idea of the criticism itself that is coming from that person that analyst and Certainly, there could be grounds for them to not even respect the analysts in and of themselves because maybe they weren't a pro player previously or maybe they were just a shit pro player. I don't know. And so it becomes to this point to where pro players themselves have this uh, have this one-sided view into which they view analysts. And so if 
that analyst doesn't meet that criteria, then suddenly that makes grounds as to that they can never be criticized from that person because they don't know 100% of all the perspectives, right? Like they don't know the entire team dilemma that's going on. They don't know exactly what that player was thinking at that specific time, regardless of whether of what outcome actually happened or even the optimal play of what should have happened. Uh, it's, you know, the player's fucking belief that uh, necessarily what exactly happened was in this context of what the player themselves thought of during that time. But, you know, generally as an analyst, no one really cares about that. They care about the outcome and also the circumstances and uh, generally just broadly and also just the optimal play that actually should have happened both from that player and also as a team in the wider sense if it's not so egregious of what the player actually did in that sense. And so pro players generally, I think, have a difficulty and just need to realize that the broadcast is completely not meant for them. It's meant it, it, it's not meant for the high level player that wants to, you know, have the complete picture and complete constructive criticism that they can then use to improve their own gameplay. The broadcast analysts aren't there for you. Otherwise, they would just be your team analysts, right? So they're there for a different product. They're there for the entire general populace. So why hold those people to the same standards as you hold those of your team analysts? It doesn't make any sense. This is criticism, which is brought down a couple notches so that the layman can actually understand what the analyst is actually talking about. They aren't talking to you know a challenger player they aren't talking to a masters plus player they're talking to someone that plays the game maybe in a casual sense or maybe they do kind of play it hardcore in a sense but they're only gold or something so they have to break it down into a level into which someone would understand at that level they can't go towards you know the higher levels of explaining exactly why a play didn't work or why a player had done a mistake and that it's actually very egregious or very dumb or very stupid and that's also why maybe you have these other specialists outside of the actual broadcast, which maybe can break it down more in an educational sense, right? And so a pro player generally knows when they're, they've played like shit. And I think that's why they find the actual analyst desk as such a thorn in their side because it just points out most of what is obvious and not as what is more nuanced or what is more advanced. They know the micro mistakes they have actually made. Hell, that's why famously good coaches don't even focus on micro mistakes because it's generally just so obvious, right? And and that can actually be caught from a performance coach or a, a positional coach, I guess. Uh, so, but it's not as though analysts on the broadcast are just outright misinforming the audience, right? They're literally just trying to dumb down the package and sometimes only have a limited amount of time to explain their point among three or four other people on the actual analyst desk. So you have maybe 30 seconds or a minute to explain your entire extrapolation as to why maybe a specific player played bad or even worse, an entire team played bad. And so it has to come down to these boiling points. And also you have to make it entertaining in that aspect, right? So there's something to be said for an analyst desk focusing on the team, I think, that lost rather than the team that won. And I think generally uh, the only time that should ever be done is if the team that lost was, you know, kind of an upset, I guess, or simply they played uh, egregiously bad, which I feel like the LCS does pretty appropriately most of the time they point out when a team that should have won uh failed completely and then they they point at exactly how bad that they were in this particular instance and that 
it doesn't match up to the strive for excellence that they have shown uh, previously. So I think that as fair play for the actual broadcast is done pretty well. And then when a team does something that is very wrong and very blatantly wrong that even the layman can see, then, you know, that that is great justification for, you know, a caster or an analyst to break down and just say, yeah, this is something that is just inherently wrong within the team and they should know better because they're on a professional level. Also consider, as I said before, the desk is dumbed down. It is essentially a dumbed down version for the general audience, but it's also an entertainment package, right? It's it's something into which you need to have the general analysis, the mundane aspect surrounded with jokes, right? No one wants to hear a broadcast that just has you know, full blooded analysis, right? And then no jokes at all. And it's just strictly factual and strictly analysis based, right? Otherwise, as I said before, you know, in other iterations of me addressing this issue, you would just have robots talking on the desk, right? And they would just be spitting statistics at you the entire time. The reason why we have humans on the desk is because they add a little bit of color. They add a little bit of flavor. They add some jokes. They add some banter, right? They add some uh, uh, opinion about the entire situation and just their extrapolation of exactly why they think a certain player did bad or why they think a, a certain team did bad or did good for that matter. So at the end of the day, I actually recommend for players to not even listen to the broadcast because when you think about it, when you think of the fundamental problem as to which why players uh, have a problem with the broadcast and maybe what they're saying or whatnot and how I said that it's for this particular lower level audience, so to speak, is because if you're a player trying to listen to this broadcast, you don't gain anything. You don't gain any insightful, insightful feedback whatsoever. So why are you actually listening to the broadcast or why are you, why are you even actually uh, watching the broadcast? You could just watch VODs, right? And sure, there may be the idea in which you just want to be entertained in and of itself. So then go into that broadcast with that mindset. Go into the live stream within the mindset that you just want to be entertained. You want to turn your brain off just a little bit and you just want to watch some fun games. So you can't have it both ways as to say that this broadcast should be fully analytical and they should explain and break down all of your mistakes in a completely constructive manner as they were your fucking team analyst. Like that's just a completely different ask and you're asking for a completely different product, which isn't what the broadcast actually fucking is. So as for the pundit side of things, their job is to be both entertaining and have commentary upon the games and just the entire scene. So that's precisely why they aren't analysts as well, uh, but also why they're more on the side of entertainment than they are for analysis, right? They're they watched specifically because they bring a different flavor to the actual games themselves, right? To the actual VOD reviews or whatnot. That's why someone actually watches them rather than the official broadcast. And so, you know, it, it would just be boring as fuck if it was just an analyst with no entertainment, no jokes, which by the way, jokes usually are at the expense of someone else's character or just general skill in and of itself. So to try and make a joke outside of those boundaries is actually just going against the fundamental process of what even is a joke to begin with. So let's just start from that premise anyways. So as such and as jokes exist within the modern world and has existed throughout all of time, there's always going to be someone that is offended by a joke. It just depends on how large of an audience you display it to, right? Do you have 100 followers on Twitter? Chances are 
It's probably not going to offend anyone or it's going to offend one person. You have a thousand people. It's going to offend 10 people. You have 10,000 people. It's going to offend 100 people. You have 100,000 people. It's going to offend 1,000 people. So as you can see, as your audience grows in size, generally, as you make a statement of opinion, it's going to rub someone the wrong way no matter what. It, because, you know, everyone comes from different walks of life. And as your audience grows, that then cacophony of people that disagree with your opinion is just going to grow larger and larger just because your general audience grows larger and larger. And you also have to consider that usually the negative opinions of people is just the vocal minority, right? It's not the silent majority as it were. So I think fans, you know, generally act like they want peer analysis or, you know, question A, uh, interviewee responds with response B. There's got to be some flavor in between that. Otherwise, the interview itself would just be complete shit, right? Like, this is why generally I try to form my interviews not on just the basis of, you know, that I'm trying to extrapolate uh, a response from someone or that I'm just trying to hunt for a question in and of itself and that there is no initial setup to the question. It's not very binary in that sense. Like you have to have some flavor into it because that makes it interesting both for the interviewee subject but also for the reader or for the uh, listener or, you know, watcher, I guess, if, you know, it's video or whatnot. So to, to act like just pure analysis wins over everything else is just completely naive uh, because as it is said, this entire thing is actually an entertainment uh, product, which we'll get into that aspect later on. So as a professional analyst, typing out on Twitter, you know, a joke, you know, like get a fucking grip about that. First, it's to say that someone can never make a bad joke right but second that there's no online public realm in which they can express their own thoughts by which isn't even particularly extreme right especially with mark z's tweet about poom's scoreline at what point do people say that someone should be completely professional in all forms of communication because they work for said company and by the way, as such, actually Mark Z doesn't even work for Riot anyways. He's actually a contractor. So he's not even representative of Riot Games as a voice anyway. So it's funny that fans expect him to act in a professional manner for a company that he doesn't even fucking work for anyways. So by the way... No one gets paid to be a mouthpiece online for a company unless their literal job is like a social media manager. So why then should they be prohibited to say what they want, you know, in said personal social media outlets and whatnot of Reddit or Instagram or Twitter? Like if you want to hold someone accountable for their social media in terms of company sense, pay them for that. Otherwise, fuck off you know and now you're entering a world where companies have literal control over what you say on the basis that they think you represent their company at all times on any social media platform when in fact in a contractor sense or in a freelancer sense of mark z you actually don't even work for that company as an employee itself also for the people that are saying that it's punching down for someone uh, making a joke about a new player. You know, jokes uh, know no bounds for punching down or even up for that matter. That's an absurd notion. And essentially, as a comedian climbs and, you know, just flowing with that logic then, there are less and less people someone can make a joke about. 
right? Who the fuck is Dave Chappelle supposed to make jokes about? Who is Eddie Murphy supposed to make jokes jokes about if he can't punch down, right? He's already at the fucking top then. Who can he insult and make the butt of his joke? That entire thought process is ridiculous and completely goes against the actual fundamental basis of comedy itself. So, so for those that are actually touting about, you know, punching up or punching down, they actually don't even understand comedy itself and actually how it works so let's go on to the response from kelsey moser and papa smithy in regards to the criticism from fans uh for poom and Rioma's play uh which i think most fans seem to be confused by uh kelsey's tweet which essentially had said uh let me bring it up here um If you guys want more NA rookies in NALCS, consider not flaming them relentlessly when they have a bad scoreline on the day. Uh, And then which someone responded with, you know, uh, like if people on Twitter are influencing roster decisions, that says more about the LCS orgs than the people on Twitter, which then she responds with, you know, you've realize that league of legends esports is an entertainment industry right use your brain for fuck's sake now i think generally this response is largely misunderstood and that many fans thought she meant that 100 thieves or any esports team for that matter uh like view themselves or i guess base their decisions upon popularity or commentary from fans or you know but in reality i guess from her previous statement and structure of the response itself is that she means that as a player's secondary job it's to entertain it's to engage with the community to win over fans that's not to say that the entertainment influences the performance from the player's side but that it's acknowledged as part of the job right to engage with the fans you know who may or may not be shitting on you as it were right so you know just that notion of itself is is just kind of ridiculous we'll get to uh papa smithy's tweet as well um but i draw the comparison to what i do within my own work uh as an interviewer Fans expect me to bring out the truth and bring out honest questions that the general audience would like answers to, but that doesn't mean that I can't entertain while doing so, right? Those aren't mutually exclusive. I don't compromise the truth or pressing questions on the basis of providing lighthearted entertainment, right? Otherwise, I would just softball questions, you know, like, (laughs) <laughs> like some other interviewers do, right? So just for that notion itself and that those both can't coexist uh, with each other and uh, for the competitive aspect to not be compromised by the entertainment aspect, I think is just ridiculous to actually insinuate from the fan side. As for the idea of esports being closer than traditional sports, so therefore, you know, there's a a decent separation within traditional sports. uh, And so we should then tune our audience to be less critical and tone down harsh, uh, ignorant criticism. I think generally it's just going to exist no matter what. And you actually just kind of have to face the noise and allow fans to be fans to allow fans to have their own specific pockets and specific pools because you can't teach a fan high level macro or micro right and so any context that you try and then instill upon them it's just going to be lost in translation so as with that, you just have to let them have their own squares. You have to let them have their own forms of debate in and of itself. So to go on to Papa Smithy's tweet, uh, basically, let me pull that up here. Uh, he basically just calls out that people are being uh, results-based in terms of uh, Poom's stage games and that it's disgraceful and you know uh, that he just had 
he had pretty good plays and whatnot, and you know he contributes to the entire team and whatnot. Uh, and to not judge him on you know his first ever best of five. Uh, so as a general sense, you know I, I I think it's okay to flame someone even without legitimate criticism uh, because you know sometimes fans just need to vent in a public forum. But it's not cool that someone would directly personally DM someone or whatever. And also fans should actually consider that this is a very new player or that Rioma is a very new player. So just to ignore that complete context, I think is just completely ignorant from even a fan's type of sense, right? It, it's, it's kind of ridiculous for a fan to even ignore that because that doesn't actually take a large amount of game knowledge, right? That that doesn't take anything, in fact. That just takes context of this person's entire career. So fans probably should be a little bit more mindful in that sense. But at the same time, you're discussing this in your own little public sector anyways. So why is Papa Smithy criticizing that? Uh, you know, at least for the people that aren't necessarily attacking Poom and whatnot. It should also be considered that generally fans won't ever have legitimate criticism because they don't have high enough game knowledge to understand what's going on and how to correct it, as I said. So why take them seriously? Put yourselves in their shoes for a moment. Now, I say that because all the time, coaches or analysts or players ask fans themselves to put you know the fans into a pro player shoes but why not in reverse why why is it only a one-way street in that regard why not go from the fans perspective and say that you don't have any knowledge and so therefore thinking in that type of mindset you can then come to the conclusion as to why you would think someone is shit or why you think someone did a play bad or why you think a particular player lost the game when in fact it might have just been an entire team effort also why are pro players still going into post-match threads i don't get it if you lost 0-3 even if you just lost the game entirely don't go into that thread. I entirely recommend that. Personally, I don't even fucking read my Twitter notifications. Sorry for all the people that follow me and whatnot. Uh, but, like, I don't even read my Twitter DMs from randos generally. There's a natural inclination for humans to focus on the negative, generally because that meant danger in the past or your life threatened in the past right when we were cavemen or whatever like prehistoric times and shit like that but not so anymore along with that we are generally interconnected species at this point you can't focus on what the entire world has to say about a particular issue or topic so why should that be any different for personal criticism like i know it feels like the entire uh, region or people surrounding you are collapsing upon you but you have to realize that social media is actually the entire world going on to the internet because we're all interconnected and that it's a wide array of different uh, ideas and different personalities and different perspectives and then also personal brands affecting roster changes is clearly a thing with you know many players such as looper crown bengi all staying too long because of their large fan base and maybe teams wanting to feed off that uh but that's also just the same with star players having some say over the roster moves so as to say that you know a a particular player or whatnot having sway over a roster yeah we all know that actually exists so i don't know why fans are suddenly harping on that as if it's some magical new thing as it were anyways or that popularity and actual general consensus which then is channeled through a star player because they're a star player usually for a reason because of their play then that then is suddenly a surprise that they may have a little bit more control over the roster than a general player would so i do agree that rookie players are going to have a very difficult time uh, acclimating to pro play both in practice or in, in part because of their 
mechanics and just their whole thought process and maybe even media presence a lot of people don't consider that and that these players don't have practice within media and they're probably just nerds that just played the game a whole lot we're all fucking nerds in esports so generally you can't stop fans expressing their own thoughts via social media forms like you know reddit or personal twitter and then be shocked when you seek out that content Fans need a place to socialize and enjoy the sport, even with their own ignorant thoughts. And that's not a space that players or teams have any right to enter on the basis that they expect everything to be positive or informative or just general good criticism that they can uh, have as actionable uh, criticism to where they can improve themselves. That's on your team. That's on your team's analysts. That's on your entire coaching staff. You can't also expect to dwindle down speech to the basis of if you don't think it's informative and you also disagree with it, therefore it has no meaning and shouldn't exist. That's entirely on the basis of your own interpretation of said speech and to go down that road is actually a really fucking dark path because it's so subjective that i don't think it's easily controlled in that sense so in essence i would generally just recommend pros to refrain from social media uh you know enable blocks notifications and just let time heal the wounds and just refrain from just going on that space, that public space, that fan space, especially when you have lost games. And you should just be a little bit more responsible in that regard and how you approach those general public spaces because you know that's already going to exist, that you're just going to generally get shit on with criticism that doesn't even make sense at all. And in fact, Teams should educate their players that that's actually going to happen. Educate these young people to know that social media works in this specific way. And then to kind of uh, navigate their way through the social media swamp, as it were. Because they're on their own in this case. They're, they're learning uh, just as a young adult. So as coaching staff, you should be able to, uh, I guess, give them the tools into which to navigate their own newfound, you know, stardom as it were. So uh, I just think it's generally just mishandled by a lot of teams, a lot of players and whatnot. And uh, this is just an entire blunder from the professional scene and not necessarily the fans themselves. Stop blaming the fans.